So last time visiting my mom, I saw my first mobile phone and it was a Nokia 3310. Um, let me know in the comments if you had something similar. Use a plus one or just give a reaction. So if you had something similar, you would know that this phone was a big hit in the beginning of 2000s. And for me personally, it was the first time using SMS to communicate with my friends enjoying the never ending better life, which I understood later how important it is after getting my first smartphone and at the same time mastering the snake game. But in the last decade, not only commercial mobile phones, but also personal computers, world pipe app, social media, smartphones, they all impacted the way we worked, socialized, get educated and more. And to us as designer, I'm a principal designer at Zalando, it opened up a new interesting field to work and a lot of complex problems to solve. And the overarching question was, how would human beings and computers would interact and understand each other? So while on this journey, something else happened. We trained computers to learn by themselves. As an example, machine learning algorithms can predict the next item you would like. In the context of e-commerce, we are learning from the customer's engagement, order history, wish list, follow brands, a huge data set, and then basically identify patterns and predict the next item you would like. But most, gener uh, most recently also, as you all know, and the hype of the generative AI, uh, the computers start to generate outputs, right? And this is just happening in a few seconds. So the problem space that I mentioned got much more interesting over the time. Now, I want you to just take a few seconds and think about these sentences in the context of e-commerce. Just a year ago, would you ask these questions to an e-commerce platform? This is how our customers start to interact with us at Zalando. For those of you who are not familiar, Zalando is a leading online platform in Europe. And our mission is to become the ecosystem for fashion and lifestyle. But we recognize that the fashion and the lifestyle is very personal. It changes, it evolves, and never stays the same. So when I was using that Nokia 3310, for example, my style was quite different. At the same time, the technology is a driving force for the change. But for many companies, it's re still really, really hard to figure out how to make the best, be make best out of it. According to McKinsey's research, 73% of fashion executives think that Gen AI is a priority for them this year. But just 28% have tried using it in their creative processes for design product development. As Zalando, almost a year ago, we started working on a project which in time turned into Zalando Assistant. For those of you who haven't tried it yet, let's take a look at this short video.
So the video told us just one story, right? But this project was not about one individual story. And the opportunity space also in Gen AI for us as a company was not about one individual. At Zalando, we are serving to 50 million customers across 25 different markets in Europe. So we need to understand how to scale and how to help our customers in this, uh, in this, in this, in this landscape. And today in my talk, we will go through these four principles that helped us navigate this challenge. Often new technologies are prioritized over the real goals behind using them. That's a mistake we do in, in tech over and over again, right? So it's important for us to understand, first of all, the unique challenges. You need to ask yourself, what are the unique challenges to your customers, to your organization, before starting a project that connects the customers with Gen AI, right? For us at Zalando, we know that our customers are overwhelmed by the choice. And also we know that customers have specific activities, events, occasion in mind when they are shopping. Overwhelming choice is explained by a customer with the sentence like, I love shopping online, but it often takes too much time to really find what I need. So they needed guidance, support and assistance. At the same time, we know that we can scale fashion advice to 50 million customers with a real stylist, right? On the other hand, we also have customers who knows exactly what they want. For example, someone who's at Zalando only to purchase a new sneaker. We shouldn't throw the assistant on their way. So you need to think about as you identify your challenge, what will be the added value of using generative AI in a specific problem space? When we started working on this project, as soon as we had a prototype to test, we went through in-depth interview, uh, interviews with our customers. It helped us uncover the sentiments, the feeling, the challenges they faced, and also their expectations for the future. For example, a customer explained it as it feels like communicating with a real human being. And they shared their also future wishes. They wanted it to connect with their favorite list, previous orders at Zalando. But there were also some puzzling moments. In the beginning, they didn't really understand how to interact with the assistant. They wanted to understand how to better ask questions to the assistant. All these insights helped build the roadmap and iterated fast. So we realized very quickly that we need to shift the paradigm for our customers and help them understand this paradigm shift. So as a principle, you shouldn't just tell customers what to do, but also show them what to do it and how to do it. In example, we decided to give customers a welcome message along with pre-created questions where they can see what kind of questions they can ask the assistant. Is it a specific need like backpack for work? Or are they going to a new activity, a sport? Or are they looking for a specific item in a specific style? These are all the questions that assistant can help them with. And most recently, we integrated large language model technologies into our search. So this new technology helped our customers describe what they want, but not in keywords, really in specific detail, dress with floral patterns, with short sleeves. And this is a paradigm shift as well. So customers were used to using keywords for a really long time. Now we need to show them how to make the best out of this technology, right? At the same time, we need to think about really important moments in the customer's journey. We shouldn't throw the assistant on their way and think about 
you know, what are, what are the right moments to give guidance, advice, and when it is meaningful to offer it. For example, if a customer is looking for a very specific dress, maybe we can prompt them to ask questions around how to style this dress or how to combine it with a specific boot. So this also goes back to really helping them do this paradigm shift, but in a meaningful way. We know that Gen AI can be useful for many things, but it doesn't mean that it's the magic wand that solves all of your problems. This is why we need to manage expectations. And it is like two sides of the same coin. We need to teach the model its own limits. And this is where prompt engineering and customer experience really goes hand in hand. For example, to fashion assistant, we gave the role of like giving a fashion advice, helping customers style a certain item or giving recommendations. But at the same time, it shouldn't answer your questions regarding your private life, financial situation, mental health. So we need to introduce its own limits. On the other side of the coin, you need to share its shortcomings. We know that it fails, right? And it was important for us to emphasize on the beta during the testing phase and transparently, honestly communicating what to expect from the, uh, from the assistant. We also provide them FAQ links and give full transparency about how it works. Even though we try to manage the expectation, for those of you who have been maybe experimenting in your own company, you would know that it would fail. It will fail in many different levels. And as a designer, I wanted to understand how it fails. Let's first take a look at a simpler example of how predictive algorithm fails first. So at Zalando, we have been leveraging predictive algorithms for personalized item recommendations for a long while. In example here, Zalando thinks that I would like this cowboy boot. So if the algorithm is right, and I would actually like this, it's a match. But if the algorithm thinks that I would like it, but it's not my style, then that will be a bad CX. When a predictive algorithm decides whether if an item is for you, it also it excludes some other potential items, right? So in this case, algorithm thinks that Dr. Martins are not in my style, but I would actually like them like any other Berliners. If you, if you know the Berliner style, you would know it. So that's a missed opportunity, right? But if the algorithm was right, excluding this specific boot, then I can see other items instead. So it was a good call. The name of this matrix is confusion matrix. But when it comes to large language models, it's much more complex. And to be honest, it was much more confusing to me also. So things can go wrong in mean many different levels. The, the system can interpret my question wrongly. It can forget the context we are in. It can hallucinate, show irrelevant items. This is why it's very important to learn in scale and understand what happens in scale. So to get into learning mode, we have built an internal platform and basically this helped us identify overarching problems that we face and also the customer's intention to use this platform. So this way we were able to dive deep into the problem spaces and really figure out how to solve them and improve the experience in an ongoing basis. Also, failing gracefully is part of uh, part of the failing gracefully is like really taking responsibility over failure as designers and cross-functional team members we have responsibility over potentially harmful scenarios that could happen and involving a cross-functional team in the early conversations to get diverse perspective 
is really essential to build products that are safe. So as a team, we have went through some workshops together to identify these potentially harmful, harmful scenarios very early on. And this helped us actually building the intent classifier that you have seen in the previous slide and tackle the important problems first and identifying risks that can, that can be faced by customers and also our organization. So it's really important to come together and discuss these topics early on. So as a summary, I want you to think about what kind of problems do you want to solve? Please identify the unique challenges to your organization and identify the learning goals. At the same time, help customers make the shift. Don't just tell them, but also show them how to do it. Introduce your technology when it's meaningful. And manage expectation by basically teaching the model its own limits, but at the same time, sharing honestly and transparently its shortcomings. And finally, my favorite part, learn how to fail gracefully and learn how to learn from your mistakes and uh, take responsibility over the safe use of AI. So on this specific topic, I will be giving a workshop in Denmark this August. You are more than welcome to join. And you can follow me on LinkedIn. Uh, to see some of my articles, upcoming workshops and talks.